been driving me around and today we are doing a sloth tour this morning Bihagwa is a really small town like you see beside me this street is the one this road is the one that leads to Rio Celeste and most of the other tours like the Tapir Barely tour and the sloth watching tour with Jungle Life also like this place is super it's a rainforest it's like a cloud forest and for the most part it's always misty and foggy rain happens all the time at any time of the day so always be prepared with a rain jacket so it's really easy to get to Bihagua from San Jose what I did was take a bus that goes from San Jose via Cañas to Upala and then stop off past Cañas yeah it's easily accessible by bus and downtown is very easily walkable it's basically only one street with markets like local markets street stores all the essential stuff you don't really see a lot of touristy stuff it's a nice little quiet um, residential town but surprisingly there are tourists coming here too so most of them are either self-drivers or they come with a tour <laughs> Headed to the hanging bridge. There are three, and it's part of the Heliconius Lodge. So it has really gorgeous viewpoints right at the entrance of the lodge. And now I am embarking on a 2.5 kilometer walk round loop to see the hanging bridges. Hopefully, spot some animals on my own. He told me about a, an owl and let's go. After being to all these guided animal watching tours, I can see now why it is worth it paying for a guided tour in these national parks. They literally can see things that we can't see at all with our naked eyes. Like, it's just a blob of black up in the trees and they can see that it's a toucan or a porcupine or a sloth and so yeah totally highly recommend doing a guided tour if you're in one of the national parks here you'll get to see so much more animals and it really enriches your whole walk in the forest <laughs> The first hanging bridge cost to enter this area is $14 flat fee. Okay, so this is the Heliconia Lodge that I told you about where it leads to the hanging bridge and they have all these little bungalows like you see behind me with little terrace out here and it leads right out to the viewpoint. dark and we're in the Taper Valley Nature Reserve doing a night walk tour it's gonna last around two and a, two or three hours super exciting it's a protected natural reserve around 240 acres and it's owned by three families they only do private tours here either bird watching or the regular day tours or this night tour so we got one of the owners who's also super passionate about nature and wildlife here to guide us today. He's super knowledgeable. Johnny behind me is preparing some fruits for guests of this night walk tour.
so we are here in Rio Celeste doing the trail now. It's the third most visited national parks in Costa Rica. The first being Irazu and the second being Mano Antonio. And it's so lush, so green, it feels like the green here is extra green. The entrance to this Rio Celeste is $15 for adults. It opens from 9 to 2. It's a nice drive up to Rio Celeste. It's really quite thick in the woods. And now we're on our way. It's a little drizzly, but we're on our way to see the blue colors. Esteban, who is conservationist, also the founder and director of Costa Rica Wildlife to explain to us all this blue colored phenomenon in Rio Celeste. So there's two rivers merging here. You have Rio Buenavista and Quebrada Agria. Quebrada Agria uh, is the little one. It has a really low pH. So when Rio Buenavista that's carrying aluminum silicate crystals, merge with Quebrada Agria, there's a precipitation that you can see right there because the crystals become larger and that's what creates the visual effect of light blue. And they recently discovered that the change in the pH is caused by microorganisms. So basically the real reason or the deep reason why the, the water is turning blue is because there's microorganisms changing the traits of the water that are making the, the crystals of aluminum silicate to merge and become larger. Mm -hmm. 